Lightroom's Intersect tool is the best masking feature and I'll show you why. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to the raw file in the description of this video. If you're only interested in the hidden tool I want to talk about, please check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to the exact timestamp. And now let's begin. Of course, before we start working on the masks, we first need to do some basic exposure adjustments. And before that, I actually want to apply the new noise reduction because we are going to restore a lot of details from those shadows and we don't want this image to be too noisy. So let's go ahead, open up the details panel and just click on denoise. Usually I would do this towards the end of the editing process, but as a few of you mentioned, it does give us better results doing the denoise right at the beginning. So without changing anything, I'm just going to hit on enchants. All right, so with the denoising out of the way, we can go ahead, open up the basic panel. And what I have in mind for this scene is I want to restore those warm sunset colors and of course also make the shot a lot brighter. So the first thing I'm doing is to increase the exposure. And since we have added the denoise, we shouldn't have any problems with noise being introduced in here. We can further bring out details by erasing the shadows. Due to those settings, the highlights are a little bit overexposed, so we want to bring them down, restoring details, especially in the sky. So that's looking great. Still, the whole image is a little bit too cold for my taste, so I want to bring up the temperature, starting to introduce those warmer color tones. Let's also bring up the tint slightly, and that's it. We also want to bring up the texture. This will help introduce some more sharpness to the smaller details, while at the same time, I want to bring down the clarity to create some overall soft look. And then let's raise the vibrance. And let's also bring up the saturation. So that's it for the basic adjustments. We can compare the image to before real quick. You can see we have restored a lot of details. The colors already do look a little bit warmer. There are a few strange color spots, but we will fix them later. First, we are going to do the masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And I want to start this by adding a simple sky mask. So let's click on sky. What I want to do for the sky is to bring out a lot more contrast. So I'm going to increase the slider first. And from here on, we can further tweak things. Now let's talk about Lightroom's hidden tool, the intersect feature. Let's say we want to add warmer color tones to this part of the sky without affecting the buildings in the foreground. This is a very tricky selection, but making use of the intersect tool will make this a lot easier. The way to start this is first, we want to use a radial gradient. Since we want to have some kind of round-ish area which we want to increase the temperature in to make it look more natural, just like this. But we really only want to affect the temperature of the sky not the foreground. This is where the hidden tool comes into play. And I'm calling it hidden because it's hidden behind those three dots next to the mask. Click on it and here you'll find somewhere down here in the menu intersect mask width. And here we are simply going to choose select sky. What this will do is everywhere where the radial filter is overlapping with the sky selection, this is where our new mask is created. And as you can see with the overlay, we do have a perfect selection for the exact area we want to change. So what we can do in here is to safely bring up the temperature, making the sky behind the landscape in the foreground warmer. So as I push up the temperature, you, you'll see the buildings won't change at all. We can further increase this color effect by bringing up the temperature slightly but I also want to click on that little color box down here. And let me grab a warm color tone somewhere in that range. And I want to bring up the saturation quite a bit so we can actually see that color. Perfect. I can deactivate the mask so you can see the difference from before to after. This is a very, very cool effect as you can see. Now let's repeat that effect just to make this a little more intense. I'm going to create another radial gradient, but this time I'm just making it a little smaller like that, placing it somewhere in the center. 
And again, we just want to affect the sky. So click on those three dots, go to intersect mask width and choose select sky. Done. Now again, let's bring up the temperature, maybe even bring up the saturation a bit and let's add another color right here, just like this, done. Let me give you another example for this intersect tool. I do want to make the blue part of the sky darker without affecting those bright warm clouds. So what I want to do, I'm going to create a color range mask, click somewhere in the blue area of the sky. Uh, maybe let's bring down the refine slider a bit to select a little less. So what you can see now is this color range mask is selecting way more than the sky. Again, we can click on those three dots then intersect mask width. And this time we are not choosing the sky mask, but rather we are going with a linear gradient. And I'm doing this because now with the linear gradient, I'm just going to drag down mask like this, just until right here, the linear gradient is overlapping the color range mask. And those are the areas which are going to be changed now. So what we can do here is to bring down the exposure. By doing this, we are only affecting the blue tones of the sky. And that's pretty much it for the hidden intersect feature. I hope I was able to show you how insanely powerful this intersect tool is in creating complex masks, even inside of Lightroom. But of course, we are still not done editing this image. So let's continue. What I want to do next is use a radial gradient and I'm going to just try to put it right there in the center between the church and the tree. What I want to do with this mask is to bring up the blacks, which will introduce some glow effect on this area. And to make this glow effect stronger, I want to go down to the dehaze and bring it down as well. Now due to this, we are going to lose a little bit of saturation. And that's not something I want. So I'm going to click on the color box again and just introduce some warm color right in here. Wonderful. Then we also need to work on the foreground. Again, I'm going to grab a radial gradient and I just want to cover this chain right here and just bring up the shadows a notch. I think we could also bring up the clarity, just adding more detail in here, but that looks great. And while we're at it, I'm going to use another linear gradient for the foreground like this, because this area is a bit too saturated for me. So I'm all I'm doing here is to bring down the saturation and that's it. Finally, I think we can add a little more glow, especially to the warm area in the sky. I'm doing this by adding a linear gradient. Let's bring it down like this. And I don't want to affect the top. So I'm going to say subtract, choose linear gradient and bring it down like that. Now what I want to do with this linear gradient is to just bring down the dehaze. You need to be very, very careful here because that's a bright area already and bringing down the dehaze will also introduce more brightness here. But I think this is looking pretty good. All right. And that's it for the masking part. So we went from this to this. And quite a bit of that was due to that intersect tool. Now comes my favorite part, the color grading. Let's start in the HSL panel. I first want to change the hue of a few spots. So mainly I don't like the green color tone right here. I'm going to bring it down, making it a little warmer this way. And I do want to bring up the aqua color tones. This will give us a richer blue. And I'm also going to increase the blue hue. This will turn the blue tones into a slightly more purple color tone, which I think looks great for sunset images like this. Then let's head over into the saturation tab. Here I want to bring up the orange tones and the yellow tones. Let's bring down green. And I'm pushing aqua and blue. So at the moment, we are still lacking some of those warmer color tones, but don't worry. Therefore, we are going to use the split toning in the color grading panel. Here, let's start with the highlights and that's where we can change a lot. So for the highlights, we want to set up the hue to something warm and bring up the saturation all the way up to 100. Just like that, we have immediately changed the whole color theme of the image. 
Of course, at this point, it might be a bit too overwhelming. So we can go into the midtones, and here we are going to apply a cold color tone just to balance out the warmer tones against the colder tones of the shadows and the midtones. I'm going to use a low amount of saturation here and we can continue by going into the shadows and again use a cold color tone, slightly bring up the saturation and that's it. As you can see, the split toning does have a huge impact on this image. We can tweak the colors a little more in the calibration tab. So let's open up this panel and I want to bring down the blue hue, making the red tones a little more intense this way. And I also want to bring up the saturation. All right, now all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And here we have the edited image after the Lightroom adjustments. So we went from this dark, boring image to this warm long exposure sunset shot. We can do a few more things, but for that I do want to make use of Photoshop. So let's go ahead, right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. So what I want to do here first is to zoom in a little bit, use the spot healing brush and get rid of that vignetting at the top. Actually, I'm just going to use the new remove tool because that should work much better. Wonderful. And for the sensor spots, I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Okay, next up, let's enhance the glow some more. I'm going to create a new layer and switch the blending mode to hard light. Then let's grab the brush by pressing B, make the brush bigger and a lot softer and bring down your brush opacity because we don't want to overdo this effect and set the foreground color to something very warm. Just like this, we could also grab a color from the sky back there, but I want to make it slightly warmer. Okay. And what I'm doing then is to just paint in a little glow overlapping the buildings. Perfect. As I said, we want to keep it subtle, so be very careful with this one. Then I could add a little more contrast to the sky. So how am I doing that? I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer and I'm going to select and choose sky. With that sky selection, uh, let's actually invert that layer mask of the levels adjustment layer by hitting Control I. And because I had that selection active, we only have that area right here on the layer mask. So I want to invert that layer mask one more time by hitting Control I. And now we only will affect the sky with those levels. To add more contrast, I'm going to bring that point for the blacks up to the right, just like that. And we can also play around with the middle point a bit, but I think this is looking really, really good. And then I do want to make the whole image warmer by using another adjustment layer, this time the photo filter. And that's really looking good on this scene. So I want to bring up the density, making this effect a bit stronger. Awesome. Now I don't like what this is doing to the foreground. So let's again make use of the layer mask. I'm going to grab the gradient tool for that. And with the gradient going from black to transparent, I'm going to paint over this layer ma mask like this. And thus I'm getting rid of all the warm color tones coming from that photo filter in the foreground without changing the sky. Just like that. This looks really awesome. At this point, let's merge everything by hitting Control Shift Alt E. There's still a little bit of vignetting going on right here. Let's fix it. Okay. I actually think I don't want to change much more here because otherwise this might be overdone. So I think at this point we are done editing this long exposure image. I hope this whole video was interesting, especially that intersect tool part in Lightroom. If you have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.